Hello, the Digital Loop, Season 4, Episode 14. Hi, Ivan, how are you? Hi, Paul. Very happy to be back. It's been a while. Sorry about that. Travel, travel, travel. But here we are, ready yeah. to talk about an interesting topic today. And right before your vacation, actually. So uh, the the topic is obviously everybody's been talking about is Instagram stories. No, I'm kidding. This will be for another episode. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Pokemon. So uh, Pokemon, of Yay. course, has been all, all over the news for the past, what, at least a month now. Uh, we're recording today. It's early August. It's amazing. It's, I've never seen that much stories. Uh, Ivan will give you a lot of these uh fun stories and I will give you uh, as well. I wanted first to go a little bit back in the past because it's obviously not the first time we hear about Pokemon. This is something that started in the 90s, was first released in, in Japan with the very early game consoles uh, and portable game consoles and then it became also a, a trading cards. It, there was of course TV shows, it was an, uh, animation shows, it was movies, it was even like I think like theatrical runs. Uh, there's been like a whole industry around Pokemon. So it's not something the, the Pokemon itself is not new. What is new though, it's the use of Pokemon on mobile. Before we get to what it is actually today, uh, ironically or interestingly enough, two years ago, and you might have played with that, Ivan, as well, Google uh, displayed some Pokemon for, it was almost like an Easter egg. You could actually catch Pokemons on Google Maps. There was even a trailer done on YouTube, we'll put, put the link in the show notes, that when you look at it, it's almost prescient. You say, wow, this is exactly what we're doing today. I'm going to ask you in a second if you actually play Pokemon or not. Uh, I don't yet, for, and I'll, I'll explain why as well. Uh, but it's, it's so, you, you could also kind of figure out that probably at that time already, either uh, Google was trying to, uh, to play with that ID, or they were already starting working on what has become today Pokemon Go, because Google is involved, as in by its way of Ingress. Ingress is another virtual uh, game that you can play on your on your phone. It has never taken off the same way as Pokemon just has. Uh, it's a lot of reasons why we're not going to go there, but to say that Nintendo owns the Pokemon franchise uh, along with subsidiaries, but they've not been the actual ones who've been delivering the actual product. It's been Google via the way of Ingress because it's a company they've in invested in. So are you playing Pokemon yourself, uh, Pokemon Go, Ivan? No, uh, there is no no way I'm going to start j jumping into that. Uh, I mean, there is a fact that I, I, when Pokemon was huge and was big, I was not into that. So I, I understand why it's also very popular among people our age is the fact that you have this element of nostalgia. Really, uh, yeah. all, the, all, all these people that, you know, when they were kids or younger, they watched the cartoons, they played the, the video games, their Nintendo and the Game Boys and stuff. For them, it, it is an element of their childhood. It is, it is a big element of their lives. I was not into that then. Guess what? I'm not that. I'm not gonna get into that now. I feel that it's very interesting and it's really, really fascinating to see the reaction and to see, you know, the different spectrum of 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 how people are reacting to this, from the extremely positive to the extremely negative. Well, but and, again, and this is why I think it's, it's very fascinating as well. It's almost mass hysteria, actually. So the, the game was not first released in Japan for once. It was first released in the US and a few other Western countries. And now it has been rolled out, including in Japan. But honestly, it's almost mass hysteria. I'm sure that all the people that are listening to us I've seen that. Uh, I mean, there have been examples of people flocking in a park. So first of all, maybe the dynamics. So you're, you are playing, you have a game in front of you, which is you have to walk outside, you have to be around to find Pokemons. And whenever you find one, you can catch it. That's basically the very simple game mechanics. The point, obviously, is that some Pokemons are very easy to find because when you're a beginner, you want to start it. Some others are very hard to find. Some others also as well pop up at certain times in certain places. So, of course, what you, you've seen, you've seen that in Central Park in New York. We've seen that, of course, in Japan. We've seen that images all around the, the world where suddenly you'd have like a mass of like hundreds of people just running around nothing because there's nothing actually there, but they all see it on their phone. This is, this is close to mass hysteria, don't you believe? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's really fascinating to see these type of videos when you have literally hundreds and hundreds of people running around, everybody together with with their phone in front of their eyes, uh, trying to catch a, a, a virtual uh, 
animal or whatever. Uh, and, and yes, I think it's fascinating. And, and this is when, when you see, again, the reaction that is either very positive or negative. There is a lot of people that argue that this is very positive because a lot of people are going outside instead of sitting down playing with, the, with, the, with their consoles. They are actually outside. There were some articles talking about the, the health issues, that a lot of people are actually going out and are walking around for miles and miles and miles trying to get uh, the, the, these Pokemons. Um, there is also some stories that they are very warm and actually they are really, really cool. There was this story that we're going to be sharing the link as well of this uh, autistic boy oh, that yeah. the mother was very, very moved by the fact that thanks to this game, he is outside, he is socializing, he's interacting with people, something that he had never done before. Now, thanks to this game, this social element of going outside, you know, going with friends, catching these things together. It's a very social game, and, I, and, and that's also one of the very positive things that I think that this game is bringing. The negative, I think the fact that, you know, is creating a lot of, a lot of uh, accidents. There is an element of safety that a lot of people are getting hurt because they are walking around with their phone in front of them, and they are falling in, 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 in holes. They are falling on the street. They are walking into traffic. A lot of people have been run out by cars. Uh, I, I love this article. In Japan, in the first week, when they launched the game, there were 700 players seated for traffic violations. There were over 40 accidents uh, created by people playing with the game. Uh, it's dangerous. So, so, and of course, it's easy to say, well, duh, you know, you need to walk around and you need to see what you're doing. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not doing that. And, and, and there is the element of a lot of people are jumping into private property. A lot of people are going into places where maybe it's not the best place to be walking around looking for, for Pokemon, as I don't know, a funeral or a museum. Um, and, and, and that's what's fascinating, you know? But, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. Mass hysteria, that's a very good way to put it <laughs> uh, actually uh well of course i mean the negative is there i mean it's true that maybe it's er early growing pains you know uh again when you play the game you have a, na a map that is overlaid on the actual map of the world so you're walking and probably of course all the places that these uh pokemons appear have not been thoroughly checked so maybe that's something that will be solved over time it's true that uh, for instance you mentioned people uh, they are hurting each other by just walking in the front in front of a high is actually the other day at China, Shinagawa station which is a very large uh, train station in uh, Japan in Tokyo they've been actually the, they are doing announcement the PA to say hey please watch out please look in front of you because everybody plays it there's been clearly also funny stories about some people that inadvertently entered like military areas in some parts of the world because they were just like walking there because it was a Pokemon. And Alaska, which is an airline in the US, has now actually uh, also sent, uh, I think it was through their newsletter, to say, hey guys, you know what? There are parts of airports where are, you know, you're not authorized because apparently people were just opening doors because there was a Pokemon on the other side of that door. And of course, you know, it was staff only or, you know, some secluded area. So, of course, these stories are fun. There's been, uh, to, to add to more fun stories, it's been like a, since uh, Rio, uh, the Olympics is about to start, there was a, a Japanese, um, a Japanese uh, athlete who just got charged $5,000 of roaming charges because he was playing Pokemon. Uh, in Rio, of course, with his SIM, Japanese <laughs> SIM card, probably. I mean, again, these are fun stories, but it's still, what it shows, it shows that it's ext extremely addictive to the point that it, it is now the best-selling game, uh, mobile game ever in the U.S. It's probably becoming the, in the same breath in all act across the world, in all the countries that's been, that it has been released. It's the biggest mobile game ever, basically. It's it's so viral, so and it's 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 continuing. It's not at least for the moment. We don't know. We'll see, of course, in several months. But it's not something that happened like the first two weeks and then people dropped off. No, it's actually people are continuing to play at that point. Uh, by the way, to the point that some people actually gave up their jobs and became. Uh, almost like, you know, especially strainers, and they only do that. They even like outsource. You can even, you, uh, Ivan, if you don't want to play it, you can actually pay someone to actually catch all the Pokemon for you. There's been that guy who catch the, all the Pokemon around the world. He's actually been traveling in planes and stuff. I mean, these are, again, the stories that show the, the, the addictiveness. Uh, and I'm not saying that also negatively, but they really, 
Pokemon has, has struck a point, that, that game has struck a point in, in the mechanics. Of course, like you said earlier, and I, and I totally agree, the, the nostalgia is very important because it's right time. I mean, I'm 40 and I remember, you know, uh, 25 years ago when this was big. I was, like you, I was not into it, but so it plays extremely well with that, although not only people that are 40 are playing, but I mean, it shows that there's a large breadth of people of a gener it's cross-generational gaming. And it's so viral that actually the, 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 the daily active users is like now overtaking Twitter in, 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 uh, and that's so <laughs> fast. It's, and they're making a lot of money as well. It's not only that there are a lot of pay people playing, there's actually it's ranking a lot of money uh, uh, every day for, uh, for uh, the company behind it. So it's, it is really something that is maybe, and that's the next question I'm going to ask you, is it a window into what could be? Is it something, do you believe it's because it's Pokemon, of course, and I think it is, it's special because it's Pokemon, and if tomorrow we were to do the same thing with another type of characters or maybe something more commercial, it wouldn't work as well. But in terms of the, the, the mechanics of the game, that could be something that we should see uh, translated elsewhere uh, with retail or any other thing. So do, do, do you think so? Absolutely. I think that, of course, I mean, it, they are being very, very successful and the element of nostalgia is a big element, but it's not the only, the only one. Uh, I think that, as you mentioned, they, 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 they really, really managed to understand, you know, the, 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 the network forces and the way how to apply this virality to the product in a way that not many other companies have been able to do that. So that's something that for sure, this is a very, very interesting case study to understand how to do something like this. Um, looking at the numbers, as you mentioned earlier, here I have some notes that uh, since launch, they have, uh, as of a couple of days ago, they have uh, done $160 million mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, in revenue worldwide, $160 million in less than 30 days. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> especially when we're talking about, you know, we, we can talk about the fact that apps are slowing down, that, the, you know, many, many, three, four, five, six years ago, uh, it was like everybody was making apps because it, it was like like the thing to do, right? Now uh, there is so many apps, the, the market is so oversaturated that not many people are downloading as many apps. And the fact that a lot of people are downloading again this app, but they're spending time there. I have here numbers as well. The average, the average daily usage uh, today is uh, 26 minutes, uh, which when you compare, for example, with Facebook. It's higher. Facebook it's is crazy. <laughs> higher. Facebook is 22 minutes. <laughs> think think about that for a second. I mean, uh, it, it, it's it's crazy. And, and, and as you mentioned, it's, it's not slowing down. At the beginning, at the beginning, when there was a launch, the average usage was about 33 minutes. But right now, it's 26, and it's very stable, and it's staying there. So a lot of people are downloading it, a lot of people are using it, and a lot of people are using it for a long time. So yes, it's a really, really fascinating case. I think that you know, you know, when, when companies understand these mechanics and understand how to implement this, not by just trying to appeal to the nostalgic factor, but understanding these mechanics to be able to deliver something as valuable, I think this is when we're going to start to see a lot of different players de doing something, something meaningful. Uh, but yes, it's crazy. And it's actually a very, very interesting case. And Niantic, uh, so the company behind uh, Pokemon Go, Niantic is actually listening to the users because they know uh, that at some point the, this user retention could go down. I mean, I've, I haven't played it, and I'll, I'll tell you now the reason is not that I'm not interested. Uh, of course, I've never been into Pokemon, but I think this would be something that I would like, and that's where I don't want to do it because I'm pretty sure that if I actually download it, and I, I live in the UK, which was one of the first countries in which it was released, I would start actually getting addicted because I remember where uh, when uh, Google uh, put the Pokemon on Google Maps, you were supposed to find them all. I spent a freaking old day trying to find them all, and then I was going online to find where are the ones that I cannot find. And then, so not that I would maybe go to that the level of craziness that we've seen for some people, of course, uh, that these stories are, are become very viral, and we'll put some links in the show notes. But so this, so this is why I want to basically make sure that I'm not getting there. I have too much work to being able to play Pokemon Go. But uh, the Niantic is listening to users because they know that at some point there could be a drop in either the uh, daily usage or simply users will stop using it. So they will implement it, that's pretty pretty sure, they will implement some other features like, you know, 
play, uh, players uh, working together, uh, battling each other, of course, a better accuracy, more characters, etc., etc. So they will go. How long it will last, we don't know, but it's still a very nice, interesting uh, use case. Is it a fad? It's hard to say now. The, the, the game itself might be, uh, I'm not sure we'll see 22 minutes of daily usage in, in five years' time. <laughs> But I, but I, I believe that the, the, the mechanics will be studied over and over and over. It's too early to know how they will implement because, of course, you know, the day this was released, and you must have seen that, there were the next day there were people that, because it became, I think, the fastest growing, the, the fastest growing uh, game in the U.S., of course, and, you know, the, we, we talked about the numbers in terms of how much money they've made, the most downloaded game, et cetera. So, of course, the next day you have all experts that tell you, oh, this is the future for retail. I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's stop a minute. I'm not sure that if there was a Walmart, and nothing against Walmart here, a Costco app, uh, that suddenly you, know, you would actually catch stuff that it would give you a discount that people will have that level of engagement with that mechanics. But in terms of layering, and this is a topic that you and me have been talked about um, in the past in, in the digital loop about layering some kind of augmented reality and some usefulness and utility into what you are doing it's something interesting in it and i'll finish with with, with one thing is clear that uh, a lot of other of people have also said oh look google was so not successful with ingress which i said at the top of the show is the game that came prior to pokemon go also by niantic but i think the, the reason is that they learned a lot they were able to do a game that was something much on a smaller scale, not as many users, they will be able to iterate and test uh, features that now have been basically implemented as something so successful at Pokemon Go. So I'm not sure really how much of Pokemon Go will be translated in other apps and other industries beyond gaming, basically. I'm sure a lot of people will try for sure, <laughs> but I'm not sure as how much will be, but it's a fascinating, fascinating, uh, story to witness because i don't think and again the craze of pokemon go was really big in the 90s but since then i don't think i've ever witnessed that level of craziness it was probably harry potter and the, a few things that you know you have these bumps but having a continuous you know level of engagement with your smartphone that this where i think there were also numbers of people using pokemon go more than whatsapp and snapchat and you know yep. really addicted this is something that is quite fascinating to see i don't care if some people say it's sad to see i think it's actually fascinating to see and we'll see if it continues so i don't know if it's released in 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 poland where you live but if it if it is or if it will be will you try to download it to see how it is and will you try to catch some pokemons uh, I have exactly the same approach that you have, actually. In a way, I'm very curious, and I like to test everything. I mean, from the point of view, is my philosophy when I work with clients is I'm not going to go and tell you about you know something that I have not experienced myself. So if I tell you to do something, it's because I not only read about it, but because I actually tested and worked with it and try it, and I can tell you my, my opinion because I've done it. Uh, yes, from the point of view of understanding the, the phenomena and understanding the game, probably this is something that will, I will download and later on I will try. Uh, I'm a little bit worried that you know, we live in an age in, in, in which we have a perfect storm of distraction that, you know, we already have to deal with the fact that, you know, we are we are working and you have emails and you have Facebook and you have Twitter and you have hundreds of things, you know, pulling your attention. Uh, the last thing I need is is that, you know, instead of sitting down and getting something done is, oh, I, I have 10 minutes. Maybe I can go around and try to catch, you know, Pikachu. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Um, but yes, I mean, this is something that, again, I mean, what I think that is also very interesting, uh, and you, you mentioned it a second ago, is the element of how augmented reality can be an, a very interesting, valuable solution for businesses. And, and understanding this technology, how it can be, this is one of the applications, this is one way that ha the technology has been applied for this specific game. And you can see the value that is providing uh, for these specific users. So I think this is something also that we need to think about, you know, how augmented reality could be, uh, could add to the utility and the value added that you can give to your to your, to your your audience. Um, this is something that also, it, it will be very interesting to look at. This also brings the, 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 the conversation into reality versus virtual reality. We had an, an episode in which we focus on that area. Uh, so I guess, you know, again, 
understanding these new technologies, understanding the impact that these technologies have on, on consumer behavior, that's when it gets really, really interesting. And, and rounding up what you mentioned, I think that this is a very, very good case and a perfect example of, uh, 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 you know, uh, one day, you know, uh, overnight success with 10 years in the making, right? You know, there is everybody thinks that it's just like, oh, Pokemon Go appears and it's just super, super successful. They are so lucky. Uh, no, it took them a very, very, very long time to get to this. And again, I think this is a very interesting lesson that a lot of us, we can take that the fact that, you know, all of a sudden appears and everybody's talking about this, it's not a matter of luck. It's not that it just happened. It's just, it required a lot of hard work, a lot of experimentation, and a lot of, you know, trial and error for many, many years to get to this today. Yeah, and it also shows, let's repeat it, the power of the brand. Uh, Pokemon has been a very powerful brand for 30 years, and it still is. You know, to the people who thought it wasn't, it still is. Maybe, again, because of the nostalgia factor a bit, but still, it's, it's all these, like you said, it's a perfect storm. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I'm not sure I will try to download it in the in the coming days or weeks because I have so much work to do. Uh, and again, I'm afraid I'll be hooked up, but I, I, I might I might try. Uh, actually, uh, you know that I travel a lot. Apparently, it also works in airplanes. If you actually have Wi-Fi in airplanes, you can sometimes catch stuff in the air. So why not? Uh, because at least <laughs> when you have a 10 hours flight, you have nothing else to do but, but play this. On this... Uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Probably, maybe we'll talk about Instagram. We'll see. Uh, and uh, if you if you guys have any feedback about Pokemon or stuff that you don't agree, or more interestingly, so if you have any theory of where Pokemon Go could actually be translated into other you. So let's say an actual industries instead of just gaming. And I say just gaming, I know all the gamers are just hating me right now. But if you think that, just hit us. Uh, all the information is on the digitalloop.co. On that event, see you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.